This is William Conrad. Because so many of you took the time and the trouble to write to Liggett and Myers, Gunsmoke will continue to be heard right through the summer months. I hope you'll join us for Gunsmoke every Saturday at this same time. Gunsmoke, brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Blazing sun and dust. Dust everywhere. And the hot, dry wind from the panhandle, baking your lungs, driving the blood to your brain, and goading you into things you might not even think of any other time. That's what the summer days are like in Dodge City. But the nights are different. After sundown, when the warm dark lies soft and gentle on the prairie... Then everything changes. The nights are fine. But it's the blast and killing heat of the day that breeds the trouble. Well, I declare I'll be doggone. Yes, sir. It's her, all right. Oh, who are you talking about, Chester? Who's her? Lucy. What? Oh, you remember her, Mr. Dillon, that girl that old Lee from Hunt took out of the Long Branch Saloon and married last winter? Lucy was her name, Lucy Middlecamp. She's coming down the street there, see? Oh, yeah. First time I've seen her in Coon's age. I hear old Leaf rides pretty close herd on her. That looks like she's coming here. Never could figure them two, Mr. Dillon. Why, she'd marry him, I mean. And 800 acres, a mighty good range. How are you, Matt? Chester? Ma'am? How'd you sit down? I haven't time, Matt. I can't let Ephraim know I came here. Oh, why not? Why did you come? Ephraim's going to kill me. What? It's true, he told me so. I know everybody thinks he's so good, studied to be a preacher and all. But he's not good. He's mean and cruel. I made an awful mistake when I married him, and now he won't let me go. Well, why does he want to kill you? He accuses me of things. Crazy, terrible things. How do you want to file a charge, have him locked up? My word against his? With him always quoting the scripture and the like? And me six months out of a dance hall? People can't forget that. Maybe it's only you who can't forget it. I've been reminded often enough. He keeps telling me I'm evil and that he tried to save me. He says when I married him, I let him into sin and now I have to pay. Well, what do you want me to do? Talk to him. Warn him something. He's crazy, Matt. I, I don't know what he might do. I can't take a hand in this without more to go on. Sooner or later, you'll have to take a hand in it. And if you wait too long, you'll have to bring him in for murder. My murder. Think about it, Marshal. <laughs> well, if you'd have taken that medicine I gave you, it'd have been... Oh, there's Matt. Matt! Oh, Matt! 
Ah, hello, Doc. Uh, sit down here and have a drink, man. Well, uh, maybe later, huh? Uh, Ephraim Hunt's over there at the bar. I want to talk to him for a minute. All you're going to get is a sermon. Well, maybe that's what I need. Evening, Mr. Hunt. Oh, Marshal. Will you join me? Oh, thank you. I will. A glass for Marshal Dillon, lad. Yes, sir. Evil it may be, but a vast help indeed in banishing the cares of the day. A man like you shouldn't have any cares, Mr. Hunt. Care lurks everywhere in this veil of tears, Marshal. Men's brief joys, dearly bought. Your good fortune, sir. Well, luck. Uh, well, how's the missus? Our health is excellent, as it usually is in youth. Her state of grace may be somewhat more uncertain. Oh? It's nothing that can't be dealt with. It's a man's bounden duty in this world to lend his own strength to the frail reeds of his household, to support them against the storm and strife of this temporal life. The man is a rock, sir, and the woman a reed, swayed by the wind. Uh-huh. But uh, if the rock happens to break the reed, what about that, Mr. Hunt? I doubt the rock will break the reed, Marshal. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Hunt. How are you, Matt? Oh, oh, hello, Kitty. What's old Hunt preaching about these days? Look, uh, Kitty. Hmm? You knew Lucy when she worked here, didn't you? Sure. Tell me about her, huh? What's she after? What does she want? Uh, A chance to be somebody. She's hard as nails, Matt, and she'll use anybody to get what she wants. That's why she married old Ephraim. Oh, there's, there's something else you might not know, Matt. Oh? Uh-huh. There's a young fellow working out there at Ephraim's place, Booth Ryder. Oh, you mean that young kid who drifted in here a couple of months ago? Mm-hmm. Well, how does he figure? Well, I don't know, but I do know Lucy. And you can take it from me, Matt. He figures. It's been fine talking to you, Marshal, but I reckon I better get back to work. Unless you've got something else on your mind. No, nothing, I guess. Uh, just wondered how things are going, Booth. I like it fine here. Yeah, I understand Ephraim's a good man to work for. I got no complaint. Uh-huh. How do you get along with Miss Hunt? Fine. Why? I just wondered. Uh, weren't you wearing a gun when you first rode into town? Yeah, it's over in the bunkhouse. Mr. Hunt don't hold with guns. He don't pack one himself. He's never had any reason to. You got something on your mind, Marshal? You're young, Booth. And it's a big world. Why don't you go take a look at it, huh? Some of the big spreads up north or on out west in the territories. Marshal, with a setup like I got here, a man would be crazy to pull out. And he might be crazier to stay. I like it fine here. Just fine. All right. I can't run you out. It's your life, Booth. As long as it lasts. Well, there it was. And nothing to be done about it. Like a mountain slide starting to move slow, but about to pick up speed any second and smash anything in its way. And the heat kept getting worse all that week. The water pumps along the plaza dried up, and even the night stayed hot. Sundown didn't seem to make any difference. Ah, Maybe if it hadn't been for the heat, things might have worked out different. I don't know. Mr. Dillon, I reckon there's something you ought to know. Oh, what is it, Chester? I was just down at the hardware store and Ephraim Hunt come in. Well, what about it? He just bought himself a gun. This is it, L&M Filters, 
It stands out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L and M's got everything. It's the best. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L and M's got everything. 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 Best flavor. L and M stands out for flavor. The Miracle Tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best filter. L and M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L&M is sweeping the country. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. Ephraim's bought a gun booth in town this evening. He's got it there with him now and he's drinking. He's going to kill us, both of us. He told me so. What'd you tell him? Nothing. He's suspicious, that's all. But he's crazy, Booth. He'll do it. You got to get that gun away from him. Well, that might take some doing. Well, you can do it. You got a gun, too, and you know how to use it. He doesn't know one end from another. You've got to do it. It's the only way. Maybe the marshal was right. Maybe I have stayed here too long. You... You can't leave now, Booth. Can you? You know I can't. Then you gotta do it. And it'll be better to face him. If you don't, he'll lay for you and shoot you in the back. And then me. I know. I know. Then it's up to you. Am I worth it or not? You're worth it. And go on. Now. What are you going to do, Mr. Dillon? Uh, it's got me buffalo. All the way out from town, I've been trying to figure it. I still don't know. Yeah, but if it ain't stopped, you know what it's going to lead to. I haven't got a thing to go on, Chester. Because a man buys a gun doesn't prove he's planning a murder. I know. And ten to one, Ephraim will order me off his property and tell me to stay off. And he's got a perfect right to do it. If I was in his shoes, I'd... Come on, Chester. Oh. I guess we should have got here sooner, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Over this way, Chester. They came from the barn, not the house. Came from inside the way it sounded. Mr. Dillon, there's somebody over there on a horse heading down into the river bottom. Let him go. We'll never catch him in that brush, not tonight. Wait a minute, easy now. Mr. Hunt! Lucy! They're over this way. Now, here, Chester. Mr. Hunt. Marshal. Who did this? No matter. Matters to me. Marshal, I, I admire you. You have implicit faith in the law. But no law covers an old man being a fool. The, the reed. Survives. Mr. Hunt. What did he say there at the last, Mr. Dillon? What survives? He meant Lucy, Chester. Oh. 
Chester, you stay here. You... Yes, sir. Where are you going, Mr. Dillon? I have to carry the sad news to the grieving widow. <laughs> Well, I... I thought it was my husband. I... What are you doing here? What is it, Marshal? Has something happened? You heard the shots, didn't you? Well, I... I heard some shooting a while ago, but I... What's happened? It's Ephraim, isn't it? Who else would it be? I don't know. I... It was I... Ephraim. You really outsmarted me, Mrs. Hunt. You planned it, you carried it out, and you'll get away with it. Clean as a whistle. And I can't touch you. What are you talking about? Your husband's murder. You're out of your mind. I guess I should have figured what you were up to, but I didn't. You were too smart for me. You killed him without touching a trigger. You worked young Booth Ryder up to that. Are you crazy? You got Ephraim to buy that gun. You told him Ryder was bothering you. Wouldn't let you alone. That he was dangerous. Maybe he even hinted he was too old to protect his wife, huh? So he had a gun in his hand when Booth shot him. Do you have any proof of what you're saying? Not a bit. Not a bit. Like I said, I can't touch you. You're too smart for me. Or else none of it's true. Have you thought of that? Yeah. Yeah, I've thought of that. <laughs> well, there's not much point in talking about it. Marshal. I guess I'll be leaving Dodge soon. I can't stop you. You could if you wanted to, Matt. Two days passed with no sign of Booth Rider. I figured he was waiting it out somewhere around town, waiting to see which way the wind was going to blow. But I didn't know where. And I didn't have much case against him anyway. It's probably a waste of time. But I still had to try. I had to bring him in and try. It is a fact, Mr. Dillon. I ain't never seen a hot spell last as long as this... Why, it's enough to downright frazzle a person. That's a rough one, all right. Eight o'clock in the evening and that thermometer ain't dropped one degree yet. Why, it keeps on like this a while it's going to drive folks back east. Well, here comes somebody. I wish it'd drive somewhere. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, old Belk. Yeah. I reckon he's hunting somebody to stake him to a bottle. And it kind of looks like we're going to be the ones on it. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid we are. Uh, Mr. Dillon, Marshal, I heard a rumor going around you might be looking for this fellow, Booth Ryder. That's generally known, yeah. Well, I, I just might be able to tell you where he is right now. All right, there's your bottle. Now tell me. I just like being an informer, but of course I... It's my duty as a citizen to tell you... Just tell me, Belk. Now, Marshal, I... If you got anything to tell me, say it and get out. Well, he's hiding in the hayloft down to livery stable. You you got no call... You got your money, Belk. Now go on, get out. Well, all right. Evening, gentlemen. All right, Chester... Let's go get Booth. To 
the millions who smoke L&M, to the millions more who should try L&M, here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter, superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, yet light and mild. Take a closer look at L&M's Superior Filter, the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white, all white, truly the miracle tip, because when it is added to L&M's Superior Tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. You put up a fight, Mr. Jones? I don't know, Chester. He's just a kid. I'm afraid he might. Mm, it's a downright shame. He seemed real nice when he come here. Well, Lucy was too much for him. She had him out in the middle with his head underwater before he even knew how to swim. Mm. Well, here she is. Yeah. All right, watch yourself, Chester. Stay clear. Yes, sir, I will. Hey, Booth! I know where you are. Now, why don't you make it easy on yourself? Come on down and give up. You got no protection up there. I can stand here and throw bullets up into that loft as long as I have to until one of them finds you. It's your last chance, Booth! Holy Marshal! Stay back, Chester. All right, Booth, you're under arrest. No. I ain't giving up that easy. Don't be a fool. Now, hand over that gun. You haven't got a chance. If you try to draw, I'll kill you. And I reckon you better start your killing. <laughs> He won't have to stand trial. He's not dead, Chester. I aimed high on him. Come on, we'll get him over to Doc's. <laughs> oh, fellow, easy, easy now, young fellow. Mm. We just about have got a hold of it. No. Oh, it could have been a lot worse. I wish it had been. Oh, sure, sure, sure. All right, now, just brace yourself, boy. And yeah, there. Uh -huh. Yes, well, now, I'll get a bandage on that, and you live to hang yet. Provided you don't get locked, jaw. Why do you have to shoot people in stables, man? It's the worst place in the world for locked, jaw. I'll try to remember that, Doc. Well, how do you feel, Booth? I'll make out. You been hiding at the livery stable all the time? No, I... I circled back and stayed in the barn out at the hunt place. I figured you wouldn't be looking there. Well, you figured right. That's about all I figured right. She was using me, Marshal. That's what it was. She told me when I went back out there. She gave me two weeks' wages. Told me to drift. Well, now you know. She laughed at me. Called me a green kid. Yeah, I reckon maybe she laughed at him, too. She hadn't ought to laugh, Marshal. That's where she figured wrong. Now, what do you mean? I choked her to death. Well, Booth, I'd probably have let you off clean. You were in the clear. 
He had a gun in his hand, even if he didn't know how to use it. But not now. Yeah. Well, I guess it don't matter much now. <laughs> Funny thing, too. I was heading up north when I stopped here. I hit Dodge along about sundown, so I figured to lay in for the night. Then I met Mr. Hunt in the saloon. He'd give me a job. I wasn't aiming to stay here, Marshal. You weren't, huh? I was just riding through. Both? Yeah. You ought to kept on riding. Our star, William Conrad. Mild and plenty quick on the draw. That's L&M for you. And the pure white miracle tip on the business end of every L&M filters out everything but the taste of the world's finest tobaccos. All you have to do is pick up a carton of L&M's and you'll see what I mean. L&M's got everything. Flavor, taste, mildness, the best possible filter. Try them. L and M filters. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Michael Ann Barrett, Sam Edwards, Ralph Moody, and Edgar Barrier. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. The Bond a Month plan makes savings easy if you have a checking account. Sign your name once, and your bank does the rest. Buys you a United States savings bond every month from your account and mails it to you. Sign up for the Bond a Month plan now at your bank or where you work, or through the volunteer who calls on you. That's the Bond a Month plan for United States savings bonds. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Canada, our northern neighbor, our best customer in trade, and our close ally and partner in defense, celebrates its 88th birthday on July 1st. This holiday is the Canadian equivalent of our July 4th. And so today, we send our warmest regards to our neighbor to the north. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the western frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters.